So today's topic is 7.3, characteristics of logarithmic functions with base 10 and base e. Um, our pages are 474 to 487 in your text. Our curriculum objective is to demonstrate understanding of the representation and analysis of data using polynomial functions with degree less than or equal to 3. We've already done that. Logarithmic functions, which we're doing today. Exponential functions, which were the last two days. And sinusoidal functions, which is the next unit. Our lesson objectives. Number one, to be able to identify a logarithmic function by looking at its graph. Number two, to be able to write an exponential equation as a logarithmic equation. And number three, to be able to state some characteristics of logarithmic functions based on the equation of the function. So suppose you're faced with answering an exponential equation like this. 10 to the power of x equals 250. Well, right now, the only way that you could solve this equation would be by trial and error. Because you know that 10 to the power of 2 is equal to 100. And you know that 10 to the power of 3 is equal to 1,000. So that means that somewhere in here, um, between 2 and 3 would be 250. So maybe it's 2.1, maybe it's 2.2, 2.3, who knows? You'd have to trial and error it. So instead of using trial and error, we use something called logarithm. So we use this concept of logarithm. So an exponential equation like 10 to the power of 4 equals 10,000 can be written as log 10, 10,000 equals 4. So log 10, here's your base from over here. Here's your answer, which is 10,000, and here's your exponent. So essentially what this is saying is what exponent do I have to give 10 to get 10,000? So that's why the answer is 4. The log button on your calculator only works when you have a base of 10. And when this is the case, you would just plug into your calculator log 10,000. So you actually wouldn't have to plug in this other little 10 here. You would just plug in log 10,000 and the answer there is 4. So you might want to just check that on your calculator so you know how to use it. So logarithmic equations are equations that can be written in the following way y equals a log bx. So b is going to be greater than 0, but it, and it also cannot equal 1 because it was the base in your exponential equation. And because it was the base, there's no way that it can actually equal 1. And a, this number in front, is not going to equal 0. Our focus will be with functions of base 10. So that means on your calculator, you only have to ever, if you have to evaluate, you just put in log like 5. You don't have to put in the 10 and of base e. Now we briefly touched on e the other day. It's just a constant with a value of 2.718 blah 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 blah. Um, e appears in nature a lot in some natural things so um, you always get e popping up in uh, exponential equations and also logarithmic equations and then a lot in calculus as well. So when the base is e we are looking for what we call a natural logarithm. And so that instead of using the log button on your calculator, you might have an ln button. And that just means that when you're using a base of e, you use ln. If you're using a base of 10, you use log. And so instead of writing log e5, we just write ln5. So as per usual, we're going to be looking at a few of the following characteristics of logarithmic graphs. Um, we're going to look at where it's starting and finishing. Uh, we're going to look for location of x and y intercepts. We're going to look for domain and range, and we're going to look for whether it's an increasing or a decreasing function. And once again, we're going to be using Desmos.com to do that. So we're at Desmos.com here. The first uh, function we're going to look at is one of our exponential functions from last day. So y equals 10 to the x. And we can see this is exponential function. It's increasing from left to right. So we said exponential functions can be written as log functions. So if we write 10, uh, y equals 10 to the x, sorry, then we get y equals log x. And we get a, a function, which is a, a basic logarithmic function, but you can see that it looks a lot like the exponential function, but it happens to be reflected in a line that goes straight through the origin and goes through uh, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, etc. And that's the line y equals x. So what happens is what we call these in math, we call these inverse functions, where one is the inverse of the other one. But for today, we don't care so much about exponential functions. We're looking just at log functions. So we'll get rid of that exponential one. So what we've got here, we've got a function that doesn't look like it's ever going to hit that y-axis. So there doesn't appear to be any sort of y-intercepts. Um, we do have an x-intercept right here, which looks like it's going to be at 1, 0. And we can see that it's increasing from uh, left to right. But it only exists in quadrants 1 and 4. It doesn't exist in 2 and 3 whatsoever. So the domain of this function appears to be everything greater than 0 and just not equal to 0. And there is an x-intercept. And so the y, um, or the, domain, uh, the range of this function, sorry, appears to be everything. So let's check out what happens if I put a number in front. So this is y equals 3 log x. Well, it still looks like the same basic shape, except um, that it's a little uh, steeper of an incline, but it still has the same uh, x-intercept 
There are still no y-intercepts, domain and range stay the same. It's still only in these two quadrants. So what if I put a half in there? Well, if I put a half x or half log x, I still have the same characteristics. Still the same x-intercept, still no y-intercept, etc., etc. So it appears that a log function, when we have a, a number in front that happens to be positive, always will go through the point 1, 0, and it'll be increasing. So what happens if I have a negative in front? So if I drew negative log, well, if I do negative log, it looks like it's decreasing from left to right, but look at that, it still goes through the same point. And let's talk about why it goes through that point. The reason why it goes through one comma zero is that we're looking at log x. So this is like saying log one. This would be, the point here would be log two, log three, log four, log five, log six, etc. Or sorry, two, four, six, eight, etc. And so log of one means what exponent do I have to give my base? Now my base is 10 all the time. What exponent do I give my base of 10 to get an answer of one? And that would be an exponent of zero because anything raised to the power of zero gives you a one. So that's why all these functions, here's y equals negative four log x, um, go through one comma zero. And so if it's a negative number in front, it looks like it's decreasing, but it still has the same domain, still has the same range, still has no y-intercepts, and it still has an x-intercept at one comma zero. So let's just take a look at, back to here's our log function of log x, and here's our natural log function of ln x. Um, it's still a logarithmic function. It just so happens um, that it's just a little bit uh, steeper increase again. If we did three ln x, again, just a steeper increase. And if we get a dig ne did negative two ln x, it's still a negative function, so it's decreasing, but all these functions, all these log functions always have the same x-intercept. So in summary, Exponential and logarithmic functions are the inverse of each other. That's a key uh, thing to know. Logarithmic functions will always have the same things in common. It'll always have no y-intercept. There will always have an x-intercept of one comma zero. Um, the domain of it will always be x is greater than zero, x e r, and the range of it will always be everything, y e r. And they will only exist in quadrants one and four. So they'll either, either be increasing, like so, or they will be decreasing, like so, but they'll always look the same way, always in quadrants one and four. Um, a positive leading coefficient means the graph is increasing, that's the red graph that I drew there. And a negative leading coefficient means the graph will be decreasing, that's the green graph. And if you have a base of E, we just call that the natural logarithm. So if you see LN popping up anywhere or this letter E, um, that's only because it has a special base and that base is approximately 2.71. And we call it the natural logarithm um, because the base isn't 10, the base is E. So your assignment is on pages 482 to 487. Good luck and we'll see you in class.